Hi guys, my name is Morgan Yonke and my protein paper, my protein presentation is over insulin. I'm in the cell biology online class um, in the lab 09. So the insulin function in the body is insulin is a hormone that uh, allows the cells to use the glucose of the food that we eat um, as energy. So it can store energy in the liver and use it for whenever we need energy or it can use it right away. It is produced in the beta cells of the pancreas and um, it regulates the blood sugar in the body. So um, it is actually in a lot of mammalian species and it is really similar in, in most of those species. So there may be a couple of different amino acids, but for the most part, the sequence and the folding and the 3D um, conformation of all insulins are the same. So the um, discovery of insulin was in 1921 and it get, was giving researchers a little bit of an issue because of the um, rece receptor structure and behavior of insulin. So there's been a lot of research done on insulin and the sequence was determined in 1955 by uh, Fred Sanger and his co-workers and it was um, followed by the discovery of pro-insulin. So um, insulin was actually the first uh, protein to be sequenced and Fred Sanger actually won a Nobel um, award for sequencing insulin. And so I thought that was really neat. Uh, so there has been an extensive amount of research done on insulin since it was the first uh, to be sequenced. So the primary structure of insulin is, um, it contains 51 amino acid residues and um, with two disulfide bonds. So the A chain has 21 um, amino acid residues with an additional disulfide loop and the B chain has 30 residues. And in the next picture I'll show you is, um, we'll show you a little bit better about this, the primary structure of, of insulin. So here is the A chain and here's the B chain. Here is that loop, the disulfide loop. It has 21 amino acids. Here's the B chain with 30 amino acids. Here's the first disulfide bond and the second disulfide bond. So in here you can see the sequence a little better um, than if it were in a ribbon model. So the secondary and tertiary structure of insulin is, um, the A chain forms two nearly anti-parallel alpha helices, A2 to A8, and then A13 to A20. The B chain forms a single alpha helix from B9 to B19, followed by a turn and a B strand from B21 to B30. The arrangements of the chains varies the cysteine A6 to A11 and the alphatatic side Chains of residues A2, A16, B11, and B15 are in the nonpolar core. So, and then there's going to be a picture that will pop up and it will be able to, again, show you a little better about what this slide is talking about. So, here's the nonpolar core, and here's the alpha helices and the beta sheets. There's the A chain and the B chain. And, um, yeah, those are all the things that I was talking about with the turns. And so the next, the secondary, oh, I already, the diseases associated with insulin are hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, and the more common diabetes. So there's a, um, there's type 1 diabetes, and there's type 2 diabetes, and then there's gestational diabetes. So type one is um, something that you're born with, that you can be born with, or it can come on early childhood. It's something that you're going to have to manage for uh, pretty much the rest of your life. It just means that your body is, is not able to produce insulin, so it needs a pump or a pin um, to, so that you can get insulin uh, whenever, whenever your body needs it. So type two, Diabetes is um, unfortunately the more common type. It's 95% of people with diabetes have type 2. So type 2 is um, 
it just means your body is not producing insulin for one reason or the other. It's not able to produce the insulin either. It's your health, it's your blood sugar, or um, your diet and exercise regimen. There's a lot of things that could, um, could make you get diabetes type 2. So um, the third type is gestational diabetes, which is obviously a diabetes um, that comes on when you're pregnant. Also can come on for a couple different reasons. So the hyperglycemia just means high blood sugar. And so if you have high blood sugar, then you most likely have diabetes mellitus. It's just all clumped together as one. If you have high blood sugar, then you have diabetes mellitus. And then the hypoglycemia is the low blood sugar, which can also be a problem. Um, and then insulinoma is tumors in your pancreas that can cause an excess release of insulin. So that can also cause a lot of trouble with your body. Um, just any influx or uh, fluctuation in insulin could cause a big issue. You need to have insulin to have energy and you need energy to live. So and that's my presentation on insulin. Thank you.